So, you've decided you want an Apple Watch, but how do you choose between the latest Series 7 and the Apple Watch SE? Let's find out! Your first consideration is probably the price. The Series 7 starts at $400 US dollars, while the SE starts at $280. And of course, both get discounted at certain times of the year, so I have put latest pricing and availability in the links in the description below. In this video, I'm gonna break down all of the major differences between these two watches to help you decide everything from the screens, to health and fitness sensors, to connectivity, and of course, battery life. You might also be looking at the Series 3, which is still surprisingly available for sale at $200. But really, you have to ask yourself the question, is it worth spending that much money to buy the Series 3 brand new when the tech is at least four years old? Let's kick things off with the design and the display. Now, at first glance, if you look at these two side by side or on someone's wrist quickly, it's gonna be pretty hard to spot the difference. But when you inspect it a little bit more closely, you'll notice that the Series 7 has slightly more rounded and more contoured edges than the Apple Watch SE. Both of them have that same square watch face design that we've had ever since the first Apple Watch. There's a digital crown and a side button that you use to interact with the watch. And both of them come in the choice of two sizes depending on your wrist. So the Apple Watch SE has a 40 and 44 millimeter size, whereas the Series 7 is a little bit bigger, 41 and 45 millimeter are your options. And overall, it's that size of the screen itself that is gonna make the biggest difference to which one you choose. What you need to know is the SE has more visible bezels. I've put the side by side of the same watch face on both, so you can actually see the difference. There is more screen real estate on the Series 7 than there is on the Apple Watch SE. Really the biggest thing to be aware of is how much text is actually gonna be visible on that screen. Now, if you have trouble reading smaller screens, you'll probably appreciate that the Series 7 has two additional text sizes larger than the SE. So that's really beneficial if you often find yourself squinting down at your wrist, not quite sure what it says, or you're pulling out a magnifying glass on the regular. The larger screen on the Series 7 also means that it can accommodate a full-size keyboard. So on top of the regular ways that you can, say, respond to text messages using either emojis, scribbling on the screen, even sending quick responses, or using the dictation feature with your voice, on the Series 7, you can swipe and tap to write a message using the keyboard. Of course, cramming a QWERTY keyboard onto a smaller screen does leave some room for errors, but I was generally surprised at how accurate the swiping and typing was as long as I was going slow enough. But let's put it frankly, you're probably not gonna be writing the next great American novel or war and peace on this. Apart from the screen size, the other big difference between these two watches is, of course, the always-on display. The Series 7 has it and the SE does not. Now, this is the feature that lets you just glance down at your wrist and the display will always have something on it, whether that's the time or your workout stats, for example. Now, is this a must-have feature? Honestly, if this is your first Apple Watch or your first smartwatch, I really don't think it's necessary unless you somehow hate lifting your wrist to see the time or tapping on the screen to turn the watch face on. I don't find it so much of a problem at all. And on the Series 7, to be honest, a lot of the time I turn off the always on display because I wanna save battery life. And we'll talk about that when we get to that section, or you can skip right ahead with the links in the description below. There are two exclusive watch faces on the Apple Watch Series 7 that you won't find on the SE. Both of them are water resistant to 50 meters, and that also means that you can use it in the shower and jam out to your favorite tunes or take a call. Don't know why you would, but it's there if you want it. The screen on the Series 7 is also crack resistant, and the watch itself is rated IP6X, which means it's dust resistant. The Apple Watch SE is not. And you can also get different finishes on the Series 7, whereas there are only aluminum, or as I would say, aluminum casings on the SE. You also get titanium and stainless steel options on the 7, although that bumps the price up a little bit too. 
let's get into the health and fitness features on both of these watches. Key thing you need to know, even if you don't watch any of the rest of this section, is that the fitness tracking experience on both of these watches is pretty much identical. You'll be able to track things like your steps. You'll also be able to see your overall calorie burn as well as your exercise goals and stand hours for the day using Apple's ring-based system. Each can track pretty much any workout that you've ever wanted to do from your regular walking, running, and cycling. You'll also have the options of boxing, curling, and even fitness gaming, which is kind of a nice addition actually. Both also run WatchOS 8, which is the latest Apple Watch OS at the time of recording that gives you additional exercise types such as Tai Chi, Pilates, and outdoor cycling features specifically around e-bikes. If you wanna find out more details about what that update has and how it all works, I've got a detailed review video. You know where to look for that. So on the software side, things are pretty much the same. You're getting sleep tracking, you're getting high and low heart rate alerts, you're getting Watch OS 8's mindfulness prompts, you're getting things like emergency SOS as well as fall detection. There are two extra sensors that the Series 7 has that the SE does not, including a blood oxygen sensor, which lets you see oxygen saturation in the blood, either on demand, and you can also have it doing background reads during the day and night as well as an ECG app or an electrocardiogram app that can help detect signs of atrial fibrillation. Now, do you need these sensors? Well, it's only you that's gonna answer this question. I can't answer that for you, but it's important to note that only the ECG is FDA cleared. The blood oxygen sensor is not, and overall, you should not be using any wearable device to substitute for proper medical advice. But here's a hot tip. Maybe you don't need the ECG. Maybe you're only interested in blood oxygen you could still get the Apple Watch SE and like a $15 pulse oximeter that sits in your finger and you'll still be out on top and think of all that extra fun stuff you can do with the cash that you have spare from not buying the Series 7. I don't know, you can buy extra watch bands. You could take a vacation to Hawaii. Maybe you can just buy a giant comical teddy bear. I don't know what you spend your extra cash on, but hopefully it's given you some ideas. Battery life is surprisingly, again, similar, if not the same on both. There are, of course, a couple of catches. Battery life is going to be affected if you do things like using the cellular version of either of these two watches, if you're doing a lot of extensive outdoor GPS workouts, and of course, if you have the always on display turned on on the Series 7. But let's say if you turn it off on the Series 7, you are able to get pretty much the same time on both of these. If I put the watch on at 8 a.m. one morning, and then I go through an entire day just getting notifications, a workout or two with my phone with me, I can actually get through to almost 12 p.m. the next day. So I would say around one and a half days of usage out of the watch. That's if I don't wear it to sleep with. If I do have it to sleep with, it generally gets me a little bit less. I'll probably be charging it early in the morning as after I wake up, say for example. But overall, what you need to know is you're gonna be charging these watches pretty much every day. But I wanted to do my own test to see just how much extra time the Series 7 was gonna get me in terms of charge compared to the SE. Both of the batteries are completely flat. Let's see how long it takes to get to 100% on both of their respective chargers. The Series 7 charged from flat to 100% in one hour, 20 minutes, while the SE did it in two hours, 30. Let's get into connectivity and the other features that I haven't yet mentioned. Both of them have an LTE option, so you can pay a little bit more, $100 more on the Series 7 or $50 more on the SE to get a version that lets you take calls, send messages, and use apps on your wrist without your phone being nearby. They both come with Apple Pay, Apple's voice assistant, so you can use your watch hands-free, as well as a speaker and microphone on board on both, so you can take calls Dick Tracy style on your wrist. They both have 32 gigabytes of onboard storage for things like music and apps. The key difference is that the Series 7 has the U1 or ultra wideband chip, whereas the Apple Watch SE does not. Does this make a difference? What does this mean? Really what you need to know is it's probably future-proofing this model because it potentially will be able to do things involving nearby location tracking and doing things using future digital car keys and so on. But so far, if you're looking for right now what the difference is between that U1 chip and not having that U1 chip, 
You tell me. <laughs> it really beats me. <laughs> the 7 also has a newer processor than the SE. Does this make a difference in real world use? Well, in terms of overall things like loading apps and sending messages, making phone calls, everything that I use my smartwatch for, I really didn't notice that much of a difference between the two. The only thing that I thought was worth noting was the fact that when I turned on both of these watches at exactly the same time, the Series 7 did start up significantly faster. Something else to note about long-term updates is that the Series 7 is actually a year newer than the SE. So if you're considering holding onto one of these for say four or five years, just think about the long-term implications. Maybe the Series 7 will get more updates than the SE. We don't know anything about future plans for software updates, but just something to bear in mind. Now it's crunch time. Let's work out which Apple Watch is the right one for you. Now, I think for most people, the Apple Watch SE is probably the best choice in terms of overall value, especially now you've seen how similar these two watches really are. But are you most people? I don't know, if you need a bigger screen, maybe you have trouble reading text, you also want those additional health sensors, then this Series 7 might be worth upgrading to or just spending a little bit more cash on just to get those extra features. If I was picking one, Look, the SE is just so similar. I would probably just choose the SE because I don't need the always on display. I like the look of the Series 7, but really I think I'm just spending extra money for things that I probably don't Interesting need. Interesting question. I'm sorry. What's going on? <laughs> Why are they talking to me? Thank you as always for watching. I hope this was really helpful for you in working out which Apple Watch is the right buy for you. Feel free to leave me a comment with any additional questions that you might have about either of these two watches and let me know which one you're picking. Of course, you can also find me on your favorite social media platform, Instagram, Twitter, what have you. I will catch you next time. See ya.